record. All right. Okay. Got it. Hello, everyone. Hey, it's, people. He's up. Hey, everybody. Drake. Wow. Hi. You guys. You're not where you normally are. Rectangle. What are you doing? Um, I decided to consolidate my rectangle with someone who I thought had too big of a rectangle. And now I'm here. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. You guys have a big, re- you guys have big rectangles. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we're talking about rectangles. I don't know why. So I what's going on? I, I, I was up till 1.30 last night. For probably the second or third night in a row, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Probably third. Yeah. You're talking to Drake about how China is trying to take over everything and how we're the only group that's going to prevent it from happening. He was not, not this time. No. He's already uh, done that a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, normally, that's what we talk there. about during the day. That's just okay. what we talk about during the day. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, why were you up so late? We were, we were Hunting? working on, a, we were building something. I'll, I'll show you a couple of quick pictures. We're very proud of it. Ooh. I am. Drake, you're, you may not be proud. Uh, your co host. <laughs> <laughs> but let's all guess everyone throw in the stage. comments what's your guess that they created what do you, you think Cameron and Drake oh you can oh, mm. that Drake is not proud of <laughs> Drake is Cameron not proud, is of. proud of well too late here it comes it's still it's still a work in progress oh, Chris. oh dang look here's us clamping it all together it's gonna be like this cabinet thing where you can put stuff into the inside cabinets and put a record player in the records so they can be in the dining room you guys ever watched that movie the indian in the cupboard <laughs> well I, Mitchell <laughs> sounds like he's he's watched it. i remember seeing we it and i was like there's the no way i'm gonna watch that movie so i didn't watch it <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you missed out. drake are you the indian oh. in the cupboard wait this so, thing yeah. is this thing is really big that's huge it's yeah. big that's that's a Drake for scale. Uh, wow. I'm not the biggest, but that that's what what it is in comparison. <laughs> you could probably fit yeah, in one of those, those compartments. Drake, why are you not guy. proud of this? Yeah, why are you not proud? I'm curious. Well, oh, uh, no, I was just joking because I was speaking for him. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me show you one more. I, I didn't have this one sent to my computer. There's Drake using a track saw. See. For anybody who thinks we're just putting this thing together from Ikea, no, we like are doing it from we're scratch. We're doing a photo shoot as well. Yeah. From we, Ikea. we bought some lumber after we bought this thing that we put together. Then we started picking pictures of pretending to cut the lumber. That's so yes. smart. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to buy a bunch of Ikea stuff and then pretend to cut it. Like just put yeah. it in. That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, we also have to buy a track saw. That kind of sucks. <laughs> but like, oh, let me find that other picture while we're talking. Because remember that picture where it was just the plywood put together or sitting out? You can, you can rent that stuff, Drake. You can just Photoshop your face on a photo, like a stock photo, like construction worker. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch, that's faking, dude. Mitch, oh. that's faking, man. <laughs> no, this is those construction workers. They're, they're more of like a Mexican complexion, you know? I want to do like a real the, pretend. Here's just all that plywood sitting in a, in a stack after we cut it. All right, so that's like the frame of the cabinet. Isn't that cool? It's pretty big. But uh, yeah, it was cool because like we, we were like working together, like getting it all square. I was pretty surprised when we, after we had cut the plywood and then we started constructing it and we have these little things called squares that go inside that you clamp it to get it to be like square. And we were like, we had every little corner clamped and everything. And then we glued it. We put dowels. We put dowels as like the main construction, like way of, you put like holes and you put a dowel into it and that like puts it together. So you have to figure out where to put the holes and all that. And then, yeah, it's been pretty cool. And then we put the, we put the wood oak trim on it because yeah. the rest is like plywood or uh, maple plywood. And we put wood oak trim. And then last night I stayed up to 1.30 making that door that you saw. There's a lot that goes into building furniture when it's not from Ikea. <laughs> yeah. You have what did to first you learn from a Drake? table saw. <laughs> Drake, what, what, what did you learn from the experience? Yes, tell us. Uh, Lighten us. I learned that Cameron will just like look up a bunch of stuff. And he's like, uh, oh, <laughs> here's the one thing I learned. Okay. Cameron has a lot of fucking tools that he's just like, I know the perfect thing for this and to like go through some drawer and he'll be like, I never used this before, but this is perfect. 
And it actually is perfect for the yeah. thing that we're doing. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like I bought it knowing like if I were to do a certain type of project, I would need that tool. Yeah. And then we're sitting here like what was an example? Uh, like the, oh, we were doing the nail gun and like shooting nails, which is a lot of fun into the uh, into the cabinet. And then um, like some of the nails, I didn't put enough pressure. And so like you could see them kind of sticking out just slightly. Right. And then. Cam had this like, I don't even it know looks like a metal pin, but it has like two. It's like imagine like the ends of a pin, how like you know like they're tapered, you know, two of those, but they're pieces of metal and they're actually held together by a really tight spring. So it looks like a pin, but you can like stretch it out and snap it together. So like the metal ends go and like hit, and so like you put it on the nail head and then you pull it up and you like let it, you you hold it here, but then you let it go here after you stretch it and it goes pop and it like pops it down. So you're not using a hammer to like smash all the wood. It's just on the point of the pin head or the, the nail head. Yeah. Oh, it's called a nail set. Right. Dang. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But then like actually watching Cam work on this thing, he'll, he'll like, okay, I need to get this to do that. And then we'll just try shit. <laughs> just we're like, like, okay, well, it was, we plan it. We're like, okay, okay. I think we can do it this way. And then finally we're like, oh, let's just do it. Yeah. And then we do it and then it worked. There was a couple of times we made mistakes. Like what was one of the big ones? It was, Oh, like the way, see, this is the thing. When you haven't done something before, you don't know what to think about. You know what I mean? Cause you don't already have the vocabulary. So you don't even know, like, you know, that saying, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. So like the first major mistake, although it wasn't a costly mistake, it was just a mistake was if you imagine, like if you're putting the top, like the top of that thing, right. There's like a top panel and there's side panels and there's a bottom panel. And there's some panels in the you know, inside it as well. But the basic thing is just a big rectangle, which was pretty germane to our opening to this podcast. <laughs> Anyways, um, this was our segue. It was all planned, everybody. <laughs> but but when you're when you're putting the top panel and the side panels together, like you could do it like this, or you could do it like this. Hmm. Now, what would you think? I'm just curious what you guys would think. You would, that's what I would think too, right? It makes sense. Like it's going to be resting on top of it, right? That's what I would think, but that's not what the design was, right? So, <laughs> so, so I did, we did, like we did like, Shame. we did like several hours worth of drilling holes for dowels on boat and you have to line up. Imagine if you want a dowel to go into this part here and then into that. So they, they line up and it's a perfectly straight line. And it's like the corners flush where there's no overhang or underhang or anything. How do you get those holes on one part and the other part perfectly aligned? So you would think, right? You have to sit there and fucking measure it and everything, but they make tools where it's like an inexpensive little piece of plastic tool that has holes in it of different sizes for different dowels. And like these pegs where you can like align it on the board and it's going to be perfectly centered where you want it. And then you can uh, put it onto the other board where it's the perfect width or the perfect distance. Like it's kind of hard to explain. If but, you don't understand, don't worry. I was there and I didn't understand. Right. But, <laughs> but when you do it, when you understand how it works, it works. And it was like, all of them were perfectly aligned. Everything was flush. So we did all that work. And then it wasn't supposed to be like this. And actually that was not the first thing we noticed. The first thing we noticed was we put it all together, the outside, like the top, the bottom and the side panels and, and the middle. Yeah. I put the middles in and the middles didn't reach from the top to the bottom. It was like a big gap. It was a big, like I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, man, I must have fucking made those too short. But then we looked at it and I was like, wait, 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 wait. No, this thing's supposed to have feet. Like meaning you can't see it in the picture, but it's not a rectangle. It's like a rectangle where the, the sides extend down past the rectangle. So it has like legs basically. So the, right. the side panels are the legs and the, the bottom goes the like here. Exactly. Like right. Here and but then... when I, when we put it together and we did all the dowels and everything, I did it as if it was a rectangle like, like this. Yeah. Right. You know, uh-huh. like the other way. And that was why the middle panels were too short. So you put the bottom at the bottom yeah. rather than leaving feet. Cause I'm thinking on top on bottom done. Right. And then, and then I realized like, Oh, that's why it's too short. I'm like, well, how the fuck would you do it other way? Oh, oh shit. And I went back and looked at the plans. It wasn't supposed to be like this. It was supposed to be like this because the bottom panel also goes into the sides of the sides. You see what I mean? It doesn't go on the bottom. It goes into the side. So there has to be dowels in the sides, right? So it was pretty cool. Like one major thing that uh, I noticed was 
just in construction in general, just with all these tools and everything, it's like it, the way that we generally think about things as far as like intelligence, like we're like, okay, we're gonna measure this out. We're gonna measure out this other piece. And like, we're gonna put this together in this way. And we, we think out like step by step, right? But with all these different tools, like the uh, time saving effort of the tool is that you can set a piece and then just like basically copy and paste in construction, right? And so like um, the tool that he's talking about with uh, setting the dowels, it's called like a jig, right? Yeah, a jig is just a general word for like something that you use when you're woodworking that allows you to do something repeatedly, consistently without having to do it manually, so to speak. Like, like for example, I was showing Drake, like if you, if you, have, a, if you have like five boards that you all want the exact same length and you have to cut them to the same length, when I first started doing this, I thought, okay, I use a tape measure, I measure the board, I draw a line, I go cut it, take the next one, measure the line, go cut it, right? But the problem is there's going to be slight variations in how you cut it, how you do the line. So they're not all five going to be exactly the same. So what you do is you take the first one, you measure it, what you want, you put it on the, the saw, like in this case, a miter saw. So it's like a long fence. And then you clamp something to the end of it so it goes up against it. And then when you cut it and you pick it up, you take the next board, you don't have to even measure it. You just put it up against that thing and you cut it. So which, it's going to be exactly the same length as the other one. Which seems sloppy, but it's actually better work yeah. than if you were to measure each and every one. Yeah, if you were to seriously measure each one every single time, it, you're going to actually have more errors. And I, that's what I did in the very beginning when I was doing all this. And that, like things would not come out the right way. But if you do it that other way, you save time, but also it's more consistent. So the thing will come out. So I had learned all a lot of those tricks. So when we're doing this cabinet, I'm like, I was, I had bought all the wood and I, it was just sitting in the shop for like a couple of weeks. And I'm just like, you know, not avoiding it, but just like, okay, I have to initiate actually doing it. Right. And I'm like, I'm, I, there's no way I can do this. Like, this is too complex. It's, it's too like, it's something for the professionals. Like this is like a professional level project you know what i mean like you got to be more experienced i'm just like it's not gonna I'm, my major thing was i'm not gonna be able to get everything square like it's just not it's just not gonna be possible and how am i gonna do that right but that was like the easiest part from a certain perspective yeah. it was not the hardest part about it yeah. the, the hardest part was actually thinking through like before i do something is this what i'm supposed to do yeah like oh that's supposed to look like that's supposed to look like that right so imagine you have the vocabulary of that already someone else watching me would be like, oh no, you just do this. No, you do that. Like they would already know in advance. Why would you do that? Why would you, no, you wouldn't do that. Like they would already know. So they wouldn't make those mistakes. It's like the dimension of vocabulary that you earn or learn through experience. Well, you, you, all vocabulary is through experience. If you think about it, because you can't get vocabulary. Otherwise you can get, you can get a uh, process. You can get certain vocabulary through genetics, but that's through someone else's experience. You know what I mean? What's an example of that for of people what? who don't know? Of what? Of you getting vocabulary through genetics. Chickens and hawks. Well, yeah, but I mean, with people, it's just like it, it, you can't really find an example because it's something we take for granted. Would it, it, like, would like, it be okay, like, like, go ahead. Well, like, for example, my great grandparents or grandparents, whoever grew up during the Great Depression. They're like subconscious beliefs about like money and scarcity and like always save stuff and hoard stuff. Would that be a vocabulary set that was then passed on to my parents? And then. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because vocabulary isn't just, it, it, you know, we've talked about this many times, like people limit the idea of what vocabulary is, but vocabulary is also the way you think about things. It's not just the words, it's your definitions of the words and the feelings of the words and how they relate to other words. And so it's how you use the words to convince yourself of things. So that is part of your vocabulary. And so you can have generations of people who've done something a certain way, and that just becomes ingrained in the DNA as a way of repeating those patterns. That's why they say in the Bible that the sins of the fathers are repeated for seven generations or something. Mm -hmm. So that information is passed down. And it's interesting, people, people might look at that and go like, well, that seems a little that seems a little crazy or something. And it's like, who, who, who was I talking to? Was I talking to you, Mitch or Asif or somebody one time, like recently, I think it was you, Mitch. We were talking about like, people were asked, people are wondering like, where is information stored in the body? I think it was you, Asif. 
Maybe. I don't think it was me. I think it was you, right? We were talking on the phone one time and we were talking about like, you know, like what, well, you know, people having a hard time understanding like where, where is the information stored? And I'm like, and we're just talking about it. And it's like your DNA, right? And we're just looking at what are people's objections to that, right? And it's like, well, it can't be your DNA. That doesn't make sense. I'm like, let me ask you a question. What is DNA? Like, like, let me ask you a question. Where in your body? Okay, you went to school, right? And you studied just normal biology books, right? Where in your body that you're aware of right now is a place where information is stored? My where brain. No, no, no. No, but where? But they don't show you where in your brain. My neurons. No, but where in your neuron is it stored? No, I'm where saying think about up. When, when you go to school and you take and you study science, Where's the one place that they tell you that they show you information is in your body? Technically, yeah, it's, it's your DNA. It's the only it's fucking place like where they're like, here's a part where there's actual information that's copied. And that information is used by your body to create things in your body. Yeah, that's not your brain. Like your brain is I know your brain has DNA in it, but they but we're kind of uh, there's this sort of. It's like a suggestion but without all the context of saying information is stored in your brain, but how is it stored in your brain? You know, it's funny. Like I've met with people who've had literal holes in their brain, very intelligent people, you know? So like this, this, and obviously, you know, there are people who they've had brain damage that, you know, they can't operate uh, functionally. And it's people with brains that are retarded. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, okay, so it's not necessarily that's the place where information is stored. But also I've read like some, like a few books on uh, DNA and biology and all that. And uh, it's funny because the way that DNA is described is like paragraphs, phrases, like- But hold on, hear me out. Okay, if you took a cell from my foot and you were able to, you know, look at it with a microscope, would that DNA in the foot cell tell you how to make my brain? Yeah. Hmm. Is it, yeah, isn't it the same? It's like a little hologram of the whole thing. But but I mean, it's the same DNA in my foot that's in my brain, that's in every cell of my body. That's where the fucking information is stored. It's in your DNA. That's so crazy. How does it go from one DNA to your body? Like, how does it? But but just if you think about it, isn't it obvious if you think about it? It's like, oh, well, duh, yeah. So we, we have this sort of belief in our society that's like, oh, no, in, your, your memories, they're in your brain because like they poke one part of your brain and then you can't remember shit. <laughs> but that's like that's it, it's not understanding the actual place where actual information is stored. And I read this one book. I don't think I have it here. It's called um, that would be like like. Your memories are stored in your computer screen and then you poke. That's what I'm saying. Like, just because you messed with it here, suddenly it doesn't work. It's like, that doesn't mean that's where it's at. And I read this one book called The Root of Thought. Analogy. I read this book called The Root of Thought, and it was like about glial cells in the brain. And they were explaining how. You've already lost me. Yeah, well, they they were explaining how the the current, the the general theory of like um, your the, the, all the activity, you know, of thinking and, and memory and all that is in your brain and it's in the neurons. And if you look at it, it's in the connections between the neurons, right? That's like the current theory. It's the connections between them. And they were like, as an analogy, right? They were like, that'd be like looking at a, a map, right? At night and you see a city, you see like, you know, like the lights connecting all the cities, right? And you're like, you see these connections between all those cities? That's where all the activity is. And someone's like, that's just the roads, <laughs> yeah like the actual activity is happening in the fucking city that's where all the people are that's where all the stuff's go that's just where they get from one thing to another so imagine going oh all of the information of the of the world's uh you know uh knowledge is in these connections between these bright lights and you're like that's just roads but that's but all it was is somebody had a theory and then they became popularized and it served some kind of purpose some kind of agenda and then I mean, probably, you know, like they used to like measure people's brains, like racists and stuff. They would be like, oh, some races have like larger skulls than other races or men have larger skulls than women. Right. And they used it to be like, that's why they should be in charge in society and shit. Like if you ever watch Django and then like the African brain 
has three dimples here. That's I don't hear that part. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just imagined that. Maybe you just made a new theory. Drake, you should write a whole wait. movie on that. That Maybe. was that was me. I was coming up with that theory. Never mind. <laughs> I came up with that. <laughs> Fuck! But I'm the racist. But, but my point is, you see how like there could be an agenda behind it of why it gets picked up and goes because it's like, hey, this will help because then we can constantly use that to subtly justify, or people will just accept it as a part of their just you know. Drake, Drake I figured acceptance. it out. I Drake, I figured it out. You're like, and that's why because my brain has three dimples. Cameron, that's why you have to put together the cabinet, and I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. That's exactly that's, you do it. I'm here. I'll watch you. Good job, buddy. Hey. So, so, so this is an interesting point. I, I don't remember if we talked about it, but it maybe it was mentioned briefly, or I read it in the blogs or something. But it's like if you boil it down to the stem cells, the stem cells that can become anything. It can become your fucking eyeball, your brain, your toenail. The the information set that is in that stem cell can then be guided into any functional cell. So this would be, this would be interesting. What if you took stem cells then from some other body or some other, like some animal or something like, don't they do that with sheep or something like goats, you know, the whole stem cells with animals thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, and then you, they take that and then you put in your body, like, does that like how does that code it would still have sheep dna yeah that's so crazy so i don't i don't know like I'm I'm, there may it. be some benefit to it but i'm sure it's not gonna like work properly well, i don't know definitely benefit if you ever wanted to grow like really woolly hair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want drake hair you get drake's got the nice like wool <laughs> <It's really nice. laughs> yeah. um so yeah like what i see is that that informational set is different right it's like if you took the dna from a tree and put it in your body you're not looking to grow leaves. Probably. Okay. Maybe some people are. So I don't know. Maybe that's going to be a thing now, right? Trans, trans human and all that stuff. Um, hey, I got targeted with a YouTube video and it was, uh, geez, I got to just read the title to you guys. I saved it to my watch later. It was like an Alex Jones thing, but it was, it was just on like CNN. Nice. Um, uh, China reportedly funding and human animal, uh, hybrids on fox news yeah Almost isn't a million that just called, views isn't that just COVID 19 <laughs> well they showed a picture of a pig with a human you can't really see it on there uh, mutant show character. that profile again <laughs> <laughs> there you go uh, looks like a black person <laughs> <laughs> so i get what's going on here they're going to create a super race of black lives matter protesters whoa who will That'd eat be genius. anything they will eat anything i've seen these pigs uh on the farm they will just chew through anything at all whatsoever well, except our pigs they just sit there and roll around in the mud um Wait, so China is doing mutant animal mutant hybrids. Animal, animal hybrids, yeah. Well, I mean, remember Alex Jones was raving about this like years ago? Yeah. That they're trying to create this transhuman species so that like humans apparently can't yeah. just have human DNA. It's going to be all this other shit. And, and weren't they also saying in, well, I don't know if we're allowed to say this on YouTube. But, uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> but in the, uh, the medicine for the lockdown the, the sheep, lockdown the sheep's medicine. milk the sheep's milk in the sheep's milk oh that's really good yeah i like that in the sheep's milk there's well animal dna oh uh, shall we say animal sheep products. dna okay yeah pink yeah. dna for sure though oh yeah so they're using this that's where the mrna change the from DNA pigs? connection comes in think about it well what is mrna technology it allows you to like insert things into your dna and so forth right so now they're going to take the pigs they're going to put that in there i think the chinese are trying to solve their hunger problem <laughs> i think that remember they're preparing us they said there's like food shortage right they're yeah, just trying yeah, to recreate genius. animal farm they read that and they're like this is so good <laughs> animal farm there you go you imagine that imagine you got enough like pig dna in you like what would happen to you? Would your thoughts start changing? You just roll around in the mud a little bit. Be, like you'd... actually, really think like in the context of what we understand with the 
information start, you start snorting more you're like <laughs> and our code is held in our dna yeah like it would definitely affect you that's wild yeah it makes sense though and then the whole transhumanism remember the other week we were talking about grimes i, I watched this like 20 minutes of her interview on the lex friedman podcast whatever it's called and she was saying how we're going from homo sapien to what she called it homo techno and it's like where humans are going to be merged with technology like we'll literally have like computers and shit from like Neuralink and implants yeah, is and that'll that. never happen hold on a second let me <laughs> <laughs> imagine that we get freaking pig dna and computers putting us and next thing you know isn't isn't that interesting though like we, we talk about movie. like we talk about uh how we went from homo sapien to homo sapien sapien right and mm -hmm. and we talk about like hey now the next move is homo perfectus right mm -hmm. but here the the tech folk are talking about homo techno right so yeah. like think about this they're like yeah yeah you're not you're not evolving to the best version of human they're just like we're just gonna fucking control you the technology right like they actually like we we're, we kind of joke about it but we're we're serious like no we need to change our society mm -hmm. right to create man in the best possible way well, all of that is happening and being allowed because people are in survival mm -hmm. mode mm -hmm. so they can't stand up against it mm -hmm. so the economy is constantly being crashed and all this shit's happening and food shortages and all this crap because people are so distracted by just having to survive like they can't even think about basic shit that's going on in the world and they're just getting like their their way of making a difference is posting a ukrainian flag on their profile or or them in a mask or something i'm wearing the ukrainian colors today as you can see you probably can't tell but that's like neon yellow so i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i'm wearing the american uh your red <laughs> <laughs> it's a little rusted but you know old glory <laughs> You get it. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the whole point of the second wave and the third wave is like that is symbolic of this next evolution of humanity, you know. Isn't it? So what let maybe we could talk a little bit about Max and Seneca because yeah. Drake's been here for like a week. He yeah, Drake and Lightning. Because I wanted him to be able to give tell his us the truth, Drake. Not just like what Cameron all things. Cameron's <laughs> see this is a big risk I'm taking here, board. right? Hmm. You no, know, you know what's crazy is like um the amount of time that is spent with max like actually teaching him like in, in the instructional way of like you know we're gonna have a classroom and uh, i'm gonna show you how to read this word and how to pronounce this is none zero nil not at all cam gets up he's tending to the farm and all this stuff and uh max gets up a little bit later and uh, he's like hey i want to go and do this and then it's like, wait, got to do my TT first. And then he goes off and does it on his own. Wow. He does it on his own. And then he comes back and he'll tell you like, I did this today. And like, oh, that's awesome. Right. Oh, I, I, I like help explain to you what he's learned today or what he did today. And then he'll go off and, and like, just continue with the rest of his day. But the result of it, obviously we see that, right? Obviously that it didn't start out that way, obviously, right? But what's cool is uh, Seneca, who's three, is now doing what Max is doing, where she's able to do her TT on her own as well. She's, she's like going and she's like, okay, I'm, I wanna do these three words or whatever it is, right? And then she can direct herself within doing that, which is really cool. And like you, you've spent time with her, obviously talking to her because not just videos, right? Because yeah. when you just see videos, you only see so much. But like, dude, I, I know her vocabulary level, what age it really is at compared to her age. Like, what would you say? Because you've experienced, you had a lot of work with like, yeah, you know, working with young kids and stuff. No, she's she's definitely talking like years ahead of like a, any three year old at all. Because I've heard five year olds, and yeah, I'm like they are talking less, like at a lower vocabulary level than her. Yeah, you know? for sure. For sure. No, she's like, so cool. she's really clear and it's, it's so adorable. It's so cute. Like just talking to her because you'll say something and she'll stop and she'll go, wait, why'd you say this? And like, she'll ask for clarification. And then, and it's not just like the, um, like the, the childish, like, why, why, why? Yeah, why, why, why? She's yeah. like actually 
concerned with, or, or like considering the answer that you're giving her and going, okay, but why is that? Like, why, why is that a thing? You know, it's not just like, I'm just saying why to annoy you. Yeah. So like they're, why did you do it that way? Okay. And then they're like integrating that. And that's part of, remember earlier, Master, when we were talking about learning vocabulary through experience, that's also part of it. So, you know, when you have, when you, don't you expect Bill Gates kids are going to be pretty smart. Mm-hmm. So yep. there's the genetic part and then there's the environmental part. And the problem what people don't understand is even if you don't have the genetic part, if you change the environment effectively, you can compensate for that over time. So even if you have kids born into like lower income families, when they have the right tools and the parents just understand how to use them, which is not difficult, that child can go from their like strata of society to a different strata. Do you see what I mean? They can, they can move up. It's like a quantum leap. They can go into a whole nother level. Cause like my kids are, I mean, you, you see it so obviously with Max because he's at an age where he's talking like he's, Dude, I don't even know. Like so, some of the things that he said. So, okay. Oh, the coolest thing. So you guys have seen the videos of like Max, just like spelling the word knowledge and things like that. Right. And uh, like we were sitting at, uh, at the, the table and Max had created something. Oh, he put a rubber band around a cup and he said, it's a microphone. And I was like, Oh really? That, that's cool. And then he puts it up to my ear and he whispers in one side, like the closed side. Yeah. And, and, uh, on the other side, like his voice is louder. I'm like, Oh shit, that actually worked. And he's like, yeah, it's cool. Isn't it? Right. And then he starts explaining it. And Katie goes, wait, 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 let's explain this on a video. Like, and so she starts a video, Max starts explaining and he's just like, it's cool. It's an amplifier. And she's like, well, Max explain it. Like, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody who has no idea what this is. And he goes in on just explaining in detail exactly what he's created. And it, it's so cool because the way that he conducts himself, like he knows he's making a video. It's like, he creates these little jump cuts for himself. He's like, he explains this part, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now we're back. And then here's this and like, wait, what? It was so cool. The way that he explained it. I was like, that was really impressive. But then another thing that was really impressive was he did that all on his own with no direction, right? No, no instruction of like, you're going to say this and then this and this. It was just, the only instruction that he got was explain it as if somebody has no idea what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Give them all the context yeah. is, is the basic implied point. Yeah. yeah. And then um, like a couple of days later, we went to tractor supply. Well, hold on real quick before you go to that, I want you to tell that story too. But what he said in that video explaining the the amplifier mm-hmm. he was like because i watched it i wasn't there in the house when he did it i watched it later and he was like um well the you know i'm just i'm paraphrasing but it was essentially he was like you have the rubber band and when you speak it vibrates the rubber band which vibrates the air molecules and the air molecules it's what's creating the air the pressure in your ears and then you're hearing that as the sound so it's it, he's like explaining the actual mechanic not just like i put a rubber band around thing and it makes it loud like he starts explaining the mechanics of how fucking sound works and, and sound and air pressure and shit. I mean, it was like really cool. And, yeah. and I'm thinking like, no one sat down and explained to him that this is how that thing works. Yeah. And I'm thinking probably he read it in a book. Yeah. yeah Cause, yeah. cause we, ha- he has like all these books we buy him and, and, and we have like encyclopedias and, and there's ones that are about like science experiments you can do at home. I'm guessing he probably got it from a science experiment book, you know, and they probably explained all that stuff. Um, the level of detail is amazing. He'll go into and I'll be like, sometimes I'll be like, Max, how did you know that? Because I know I haven't explained that to him. Yeah. And he'll be like, I read it in one of my books. I'm like, okay. You know, uh, before I go on to the next story, I saw um, Seneca was like pouring water from one cup to another, just sitting there by herself. And she's like, oh, look at the bubbles. The bubbles come from, she, she was saying like, it's, it's vibrating it's it's vibrating it's, and and she's three years old They're like little scientists yeah and she's like using the word vibrating and and bubbles and like like actually understanding the concept of like vibration it was anyway it was really cool um but we went to tractor supply and as we were checking out max had gotten all these batteries uh <laughs> he was super excited about going to tractor supply because he was like 
I want to go get a bunch of batteries. Yeah. So we went to Chick-fil-A, which we don't normally do that. It's more like a kind of a treat thing. So we went to Chick-fil-A first. He got a little bit of breakfast Chick-fil-A. And then we went to Tractor Supply because I had to get some stuff. I forgot what, but stuff for the animals. And then he was like, I'm going to go focus. So I went and did that. And he went with Drake to go look at batteries. Yeah. That's like his toy. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't want to go to the toy store. He's like, I want to look at some batteries. So you could talk more about that because yeah. I wasn't over there. So like first we looked for the batteries. We found the batteries. And he's like, ooh, look at like he, he found well, he already has these massive like six volt batteries, right? But he's like, but Drake, this one is a job smart. And job smart, that's a pretty good brand of battery. <laughs> so he's like, we gotta get this one. Oh, and one of these A23s. This is a this is not a common battery. So I, I need one of these because they're not common. And like we're picking out all these like odd sized batteries that, that are a lot of fun. And then as we're checking out, um, like he's putting all the batteries on the counter and he, he tells the, the woman checking us out, like you can put all those in a separate bag. So that way they're not all mixed with all that other stuff, you know? And uh, she's like, oh, are you, are you like building some kind of robot or something? It's like, no, I'm like- Hold on, hold on, wait, wait. There's, a, there's another thing he said that spurred that point. What's that? Because he said you could put those separately. And she's like, okay. And then he, he has this pattern that he uses and he, and he goes, you might ask why I'm buying all those batteries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And she was like, Oh, why, why are you getting all those batteries? And he was like, well, um, he goes, electricity is the most powerful force in my life and in your life and all of our lives. And he said, you know, I'm kind of a, you know, you might think that I'm some kind of a, like, like electrical worker, but actually I'm, I'm an electrical engineer. Do you know the difference between an electrical engineer and an, an electrician? She's like, no, what's the difference? He's like, an electrician more works with circuits and wires and applies the concepts of electricity, but an electrical engineer more studies them. And so I'm kind of more in the way of studying them at the moment. He's like, you know, maybe when I'm older, I might do some more like applying them and electrical work and so forth. And he's like going on in this like speech, that was, like it's a YouTube video, that was right? Almost verbatim what he said, yeah. almost verbatim, like exactly those words he's using. It, exactly in that, that tone. tonality yeah. like that way he's like you might say that you know i'm i'm an electrician but actually and he's like explaining the concepts to her right she's like uh-huh uh-huh and, and the woman's like you're really smart <laughs> like like she, she's like you're really smart and, and max is like yeah that's because i use this this no he, he he said uh wait, wait. He, she asked him how old he was it was five she was like yeah you're really smart and he goes yeah but that's because I use a tool to learn. It's called Techno Tutor. Yeah. Right. And then they kept talking. And then throughout the checkout, she's like, he's so smart. And they kept saying how smart he was. Right. And then I, I forget what happened. Like, pe like, like, I think he was saying, like, he was explaining to her something about like, uh, do you know, because he was referring to me as his dad. And he goes, you know, I don't usually call him dad. I actually call him Cameron. And she's like explaining to that to him, right? And somebody in the background was like, you call your dad a Karen? Like trying to make yeah, some yeah. spiteful joke. And I'm yeah. like, all right, let's go, right? Because yeah. I don't want this to turn into a thing where people are being spiteful to him. Um, so anyways, but then we got in the car and I was like, that was really cool, Max. Like you were talking about Techno Tutor and all that. And I said, next time I see her, then I can bring it up. Like when it's just me and I'm not directing other people with you. And then I realized I had forgotten something that I was going to buy there. So I went back in real quick while Drake and Max stayed in the car. And I went back in just to get something that, you know, I did to pay for it was outside. And, and she was like, your son is so smart. And I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, he was telling you why. And she was like, what do you mean? He was like, it's this program. It's called techno -tier. He was telling you that's what it is. And she was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I said, he, you know, he's only five. He reads at a high school level. She was like, really? And she was like, well, she's like, hmm, that's interesting. He was like my, you know, I have a son who's got ADHD and my daughter's got dyslexia and they're really smart, but the schools can't help them. And I'm like, okay, well you should look at techno tutors. So we like wrote down my number and like my name and everything for her. And there was a woman in the background and she was like at the register and she was like, I'm just trying to listen to what y'all are talking about because I have a son who's got like, or a grandson who's got like speech delay issues. And I'm like, dude, we can help you with all that stuff. Get make a copy. So like printing out receipt and like writing it all down. Right. And, uh, and I went back and explained to Max, like, how that works because normally like when i'm with people and with max i'm trying to direct them with him so i always told him like if you tell people about it then when i see them again or it just depends on the context right like sometimes i can start talking to them but 
what'll happen a lot of times is they'll start just talking to me and then he's being ignored and then I can't direct what's going on with that. So we'll go places that we go regularly and he'll talk to people and then I'll come back and follow up with those people. And like, I mean, Jake just sold somebody, a techno tutor, just while he was here that Max had gone and talked to and told him about techno tutor. And that was how it got introduced. And then Drake went and did the presentation for him. Yeah. Like, like that. Right. So it's just really cool because people see him and like, I mean, we didn't really go much, go, go out much, but like one day I took him to Louisiana with me and, um, we, uh, we had to do a bunch of different errands. We were going to a bunch of different places and he, uh, every single place we went, he was talking to people and they, every single person was like, you are so smart. Like, this is amazing. Like people were telling him like, and it's funny because I remember one time when we were talking to Bernard in the beginning about tech and and everything, he was explaining to us the concept of when your vocabulary like gets to a certain point, right? People will recognize that. And so the child will do it as a point of realizing that they stand out. Mm. Like, obviously you don't want it to become a point where it's an inequality, but in the current context of where things are at, where if you have a high vocabulary, you are going to stand out. Like they'll start to see like they're getting recognition for that. They're, 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 they're actually more helpful. You see what I mean? So he gets that reinforcement all the time. So he wants to talk about it. Yeah. And I've always explained to him, our point isn't so that you're really smart and no one else is. Our whole point is to make sure everyone else also is able to develop what you do. So the more people you talk to about tech computer, you're helping them become smart like you. So whenever someone says you're smart, what you need to help them understand is it's not just because you're smart. It's because of how you have being educated with a tech computer. So that's why he always does that. It's like, we've explained that to him. So he's not trying to be like, <laughs> like when I was growing up, people would always tell me I'm smart, but it became a point of like personal pride, like yeah, yeah, ego yeah. of like, I'm yeah. special. Yeah. That's how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just smarter than other people, but that's not acceptable. It's so funny. Like with Max, like whenever someone says he's smarter, like anything like that's a, a compliment he'll be like i know and he'll keep going with whatever he's like trying to yeah tell, if they're like you're really smart. He's like yeah i know and then yeah. he just keeps talking like <laughs> you're really intelligent i know but look at this circuit <laughs> that's awesome though because like um you were considered a smart child as well cameron but then as we've heard many times in the podcast you talk about all the emotional you know issues yeah that you but, but also like i was not smart like he is yeah can, like, well, can you talk about that for a second? I, so, I got recognition yeah. at school. I got recognition in in first grade because I could read green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and that was like Damn. the limits of my abilities. Okay. It's not like, like, I mean, when people say like, oh, wow, Kevin, you're so smart. I'm like, I mean, compared to what? Like compared to someone who just works at Walmart. I mean, okay. I mean, yeah. the, the thing is you're, you're not comparing that person to he, to the fullness of human potential, mm -hmm. like compare me to that. Cause that's what I want for the children that are, like you said, the second, third wave and so forth is for them to reach their fullest potential, not use me as a standard. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like smart is just relative and, and, and all it is when people say I'm smart, when I would meet people, like when I was growing up is just that they were, they were so, um, I mean, what is it? It's like, if you talked about, anything that wasn't just what's on the news or in a you know mainstream thing that they're all being programmed with it's like you're smart because you can talk about something they don't know about that's all it is it's like how do you know i'm smart you've only talked to me for five minutes yeah what have you seen me do yeah it's just like, like well i just you like just sound smart buzzword. you just sound like you're really smart and i'm like i could be reading a fucking script how do you know like what i'm how why am i smart and it's really just more like the feel, the person feels inferior to you because they don't know something you know that's a total different type of actually being smart which is like with Max, like he can, I remember one time um, my sister, there was something going on with my sister. And like, we thought that she had some kind of illness. She ended up not actually having the issue, but we had to go to the hospital to get some tests done when I was like, maybe in maybe like late middle school, early high school, something, maybe like late middle school, I think. And so we were there at this hospital all day. It was like a children's hospital. And I had this book, it was Einstein's special relativity. I think it was special and general relativity. I think it was special relativity. It's like a short book, right? And it has all the equations and they're not very complex equations. Like if you study calculus and you actually understand it, it's, it's not complicated shit, special relativity. Knowing, I know that now. Back then I didn't know what the fuck it was talking about. 
Like I was reading it, like, cause it's like, I wanted to understand it. I wanted to be smart. I wanted to know like, what is this interesting, crazy stuff, these concepts. And I would read the books about explaining relativity. You know what I mean? Like where they explain the concepts through analogies. And I would love that kind of stuff. I like to read science fiction, but I didn't understand what the fuck the actual Einstein book was saying. You know what I mean? The one he wrote. And I remember we were at this place and, and I was like on the chalkboard, like drawing out the equations, you know, and, and my parents were like annoyed by it because it was like, I was trying to pretend like I knew something. Do you know what I mean? Which was true to a certain degree, but also I was like trying to just play with it. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing versus like the level at that age, the level max would be at, um, you would understand what it says. Do you see what I mean? So like that, that's just one example. Like I would not actually understand how to do things. I would just be able to talk about it in a way where I could repeat what I heard. That's really what it is. Mm. My, my memory ability is why people thought I was smart because I could hear stuff without fully understanding it. Like I could watch a speech of someone talking about relativity and I could repeat all the stuff they said. So it sounds like I know what the fuck I'm talking about but I couldn't write the equations and solve equations or do Like I didn't really understand. I could just kind of mimic things. You see what I mean? So that's where people think it's smart because what do we reward in school? Yeah. That ability to, to just memorize enough. Right. On the test. You and and I've done that. so many specifically techno tutor presentations with people like where they're millionaires. Right. And they have like their own business. Like they own like a whole uh, set of car dealerships or like exotic car dealerships or whatever. And, and I'll be sitting down with the family and I'll try to explain to them like, you see, for example, you're a very successful person. You're very smart. And they'll be like, no, 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 I, I'm not smart. Like I did terrible in school. Like I actually had dyslexia and all this stuff. Right. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand that, but you own like 10 exotic car dealerships. Okay. You live in a $10 million home. Like you're not dumb. And they're like, and, and they'll, they'll try to excuse it. Like, oh, it's like, I'm just really good at doing this. I'm and just like, lucky. yeah. And it's like, no, they don't say they're lucky. It's just like, oh, I'm just really good at that thing. And I'm like, but okay, let's take a smart person who you, who's the smartest person, you know, like some PhD guy. Right. And then you have him go run your dealerships. Like this guy is actually doing something that affects people in a real way. Like you want a car and so forth. Right. And like the people have the jobs and all the professor doesn't do shit. So it's interesting because even the people who are very effective, there's a lot of business people that will think and say that they're not very smart because they didn't do well in school. And so even within themselves, they've defined being smart as doing well in school. They don't see what they're doing as a smart thing, mm. but running a business is, a, it, it takes actual intelligence Yeah, because it's, there's actual results that you can measure. Think about it. If someone comes up to you and says, I have a PhD and whatever, like, how do you know? If they can do anything, right? Because they could have literally just gone to school, wrote a paper that no one can fucking understand, and that people check the things, and they just repeating all the stuff that they heard, and they just going through school. I mean, I did really well in school, and I didn't learn shit, just because I could remember what they told me, and I could put I could put context together, so I could be like, well, you know, like in the Western civilization, you know, the rise of the cathedrals. And you could start talking about all these like concepts and be like, wow, you really know a lot. And it's like, I'm just fucking repeating what something I heard like back here. That's all it is. But the level of intelligence Max has and Seneca have is like a whole nother thing. Like they actually like Mac, remember that circuit Max showed us? It was like this super complex, like circuit with like stuff stacked on top of it. Yeah. And he was like, look, if I turn the switch, the light turns on. I'm like, okay. He goes, but if I hook this antenna onto here oh, yeah. and then the light brightens up, I was like, how does it do that? <laughs> He's like, it's like an antenna. And I'm like, how is he doing that? And, and I was like, did you make this yourself? Cause sometimes he'll like, he has like an instruction booklet and he'll, it'll go through and he'll show you how to build a circuit. But I'm like, there's no way that was one of the circuits. Cause it'll usually be something that's more like obvious. And he was like, no, I just made this up. And I'm like, like, he's sitting there making up his own stuff now. Yeah. And it was cool. Like, uh, we got back to the house one day and he built an FM radio. <laughs> he's just like, oh, <laughs> do you guys remember? Like, I have a video back from when he's like three. Yeah. I think he's three years old. 
where he's sitting with me and we're building a radio right like yeah. out of like components and stuff and he's showing like oh that's a resistor he knows but i'm doing all of the work and reading it and right. asking him questions and stuff but he you can see how he's processing it right now he's doing all that on his own Th yeah like without side. anyone talking to him about yeah. it like <laughs> i know he's doing it on his own because he was there with christine and christine doesn't know how to build radio. i was in the room <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, it's pretty cool like just seeing uh you know obviously when he was two it was impressive that he knew the alphabet you know that was really impressive just like oh these letters he, he knew them he knew uppercase lowercase at two right and then now he's five the jump that's been made and obviously there's a, a progression that that's happening that's very logical but just how quickly he's progressing is insane, right? Where now at this point, he's just like, he's sitting next to me actually at dinner last night, he's reading a book on his own. And I could see, you know how Cam's like talking about like how his eyes scan across the page. Like I'm watching from the perspective of like, I'm on the other side of the book. He's sitting here. Reading. Yeah. And I'm just watching his eyes and they're going so fast one over the other, over the other. I'm like, Fuck, I can't read that fast. Yeah, he's just like, it's it's and turn then he's turning the page. Yeah, and I'm like what? And the then you fuck? go ask him. Yeah, tell me something about that book, and he'll tell you fucking details, it, like real specific details. And he'll even describe yeah. like the way they describe stuff, like use all the language of it, and like I mean, like read the, any. I challenge anybody to go get a copy of the Never Ending Story. Do you, you guys ever? I know you're like a little bit younger than I am, but like when I was a kid, that was a movie that that was like kind of popular at the time. And I didn't even know that it was based on a book. So he doesn't even know there's a movie yet. He just is reading the book. And it's like, it was written by like this German guy. It's a novel. It's not just like a kid's book. It's not like Harry Potter. It's, it's a novel. It's, it's, it's relatively higher vocabulary. Hmm. Um, but he's reading that. And well, why was I going to bring that up? Oh, because there's this, there's this concept in the book called the nothing. And it's like this sort of nothing that spreads and engulfs things. And what it does is it sucks people from one world, the fantastical world into the human world. And there's this whole, there's this whole concept, right? And like, we were driving the other day and it was like kind of foggy, I think, or no, no, it wasn't foggy. We were on this dirt road and the truck in front of us picked, had kicked up a lot of dust. So it was all this dust everywhere. And he was like, Cameron, that's kind of what the nothing looks like. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, it's just sort of like a misty sort of cloudy sort of thing. Right. So he's like already visualizing all of that. Right. Cause I didn't explain that to him. Like this is from him reading the book and then processing it and then seeing like, hey, that's what that would be like, right? You guys remember watching this video where like Max is just like, uh, he's talking about something and he's like, bother that. And then like, just continues on it. I, I realized that's from a book that he was reading. I was like, I flipped through some random book. Uh, and as I was reading it, it's like the, the way this dragon is, is writing. And he's like, oh, bother. And like, and Max is like, I was reading it out loud. And Max is just laughing. He's like, yeah, I don't say bother that anymore. <laughs> well, there's a couple. Yeah, we have a couple. Another book, too, about this cat that, like, it's kind of like people. the families are really annoyed with it because it's always, like, be, doing stuff. But then it ends up, like, alerting them about a burglar. But they're always saying, like, when it cries for stuff, they're always saying, oh, bother that cat. Because it's like a British book. Hmm. So there's uh -huh. a couple books we have. So it's like, for them, it's like a common thing. So lately, he hasn't been doing it as much. But, like, he would just be like, oh, Seneca bother that thing like like he would speak like that right because he had read it in a book right did, did he say that he, he doesn't do that anymore did you guys like correct that or like did you guys give him perspective on like I don't know I didn't he just said that he was just like yeah I don't he was laughing about it he's like I don't say that anymore <laughs> um, so like do you think there's a limit on what Max can learn and do why would there be literally just time yeah it's just literally time and focus and that's it i mean wow yeah so and, and i mean like i said he's only five five and a half he'll be six at the end of october and you think about how much time you wasted sitting in a schoolroom, not mm -hmm. learning anything like the, okay just put yourself back in school okay when you were learning about like, well, like you know like what will be something like algebra are you guys remember learning it, like about algebra? Mm -hmm. Like imagine how long it took you in the classroom to learn a specific concept, like several weeks yeah. before you're tested on it. That would be something he'd learn in a day, like within 30 minutes. 
He would learn it. He'd practice it next. And it would always probably be in the context of like John Taylor Gatto talks about, like when you need it. Mm-hmm. So like, well, but you need to learn algebra at this age. Like, not really. It's like, when do you actually need algebra? Because if you're really, fu- if you're able to process information and learn like that, then as soon as you need it, you just, I mean, we're fucking doing it in real time, building that bookcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, how are we going to put these dowels? I'm like, wait, I remember buying this tool for like 20 bucks three months ago, because it said you could easily put dowels and things. Yeah, yeah, I bet I could use that. And I look and I look at it. I'm like, how the fuck do you use this? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like going and reading the instruction manual. And I'm like, okay. And then I kind of test it. I'm like, all right, cool. I can do this. So like within like 20 minutes, we learned how to drill dowel holes into furniture. And like, we made something that, I mean, it's pretty fucking perfect. I mean, for the first time we've ever done anything like this, yeah. it's like, wow, I thought it was going to be really fucked. Like when I, when we put it together, but it was, I mean, it's like, there's very few places where it's off like the edges or anything. And it's like maybe a millimeter yeah, at yeah, most yeah. in like one corner, like barely. And you can go and look at it. It's pretty, pretty good. And I mean, even, even when I did, when I measured the cabinet spaces, yeah, right. Like these, well, you can see the, they guys can't see the yeah. picture, but like the height and everything, it was exactly what they said it should be. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was like, Oh shit. Yeah, no, that's how I knew how long those, uh, those cause I was like, Oh, we need to measure this. And Drake was like, it's going to be this. And I'm like, how'd you know that? Because it's what it said it would be, but it actually turned out that way. <laughs> I was like, Oh shit. It's actually that height. Yeah. You know, with like very slight variation. So my point being, I trust myself and, and actually I have some neighbors. They're much older. Like, I mean, they're like, they're old and it's interesting talking to them because everything is about limitation like one of their big limitations is always money like the the husband works at walmart he's worked there since for like 30 years or something right i have some ridiculous thing right and um it's fascinating because the wife is always complaining about the husband not like in a very big way but she's like always subtly complaining because she'll see stuff that we're doing and she'll be like oh well so and so he you know he's not like that like he can't do all those things and i'm like before I moved here, I couldn't do any of this either. I'm like, but I, I can learn. Like, I know how to learn. That's what I'm doing. Right. So I don't, I'm not, it's like people say, oh, you're smart. Okay. So that means you know how to build a bookcase. Hmm. Like does Bill Gates know how to do that? Probably not. Like it's a, it's a vocabulary you have to develop. It's not about being smart. It's about developing the vocabulary for it. The problem is people's vocabularies are so limited that when someone has a higher vocabulary, their immediate thing is, oh, that person's smart. Yeah, that's like, I was, I was explaining to someone, like, you really just stop learning after the age of seven. Like, for the, for the most part, most people, like, yeah, you're still in school, and, like, you learn new concepts or whatever, but you can't really take in that, like, it's not new ways of thinking. When you see, like, the kids and how they actually learn, then you realize, oh, fuck, people are not learning. Yeah, yeah. Because all, all you're doing is like, because once you get to a certain level, especially in school, once you get to a certain level, you're just like, ah, I can't do that. If you were constantly learning, your life would be fundamentally changing all the time. Mm. Like Mitch, look at yourself two years ago. Has your life fundamentally changed? Oh, yeah, like 20 times over. And I don't just mean like you have more things that you want and so forth. Like look at your relationships, like your like the networks. Look at the network you had before versus the network you have now and like the mm-hmm. depth of relationship and all of that. So like look at how your life is fundamentally growing and growing and growing. It's because you're constantly learning and expanding. That's what life should be. The purpose of life is to constantly expand and grow in a way that's best, not just for the sake of growth, but. In, in a way of improving the balance that should be here. So if you're not, if, if, they, if you're not constantly growing, 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 expanding, learning new things, like you're not learning, you, you would see the result, like interchange without immediate outer change is a lie. So if you're saying I'm in school for 12 years, okay, what can you do fundamentally that you couldn't do 12 years ago when you started? I mean, dude, can you imagine if we spent 12 years all day, every day, like building cabinets? How fucking good would we be at building cabinets in 12 years? We'd be great. Like insane. So Best what cabinet makers, ever. I want you to show me the normal, the average five-year-old and the average 18 year old. And is there much of a difference? No, especially not today. And like, look at the, uh, my five-year-old and the average 18 year old. And he's already smarter than them. Yeah. He can explain shit that they don't even know about. 
And what are they doing? They're just on fucking TikTok, dumbing themselves down. And so we're creating a society where people just want to be entertained because they don't know shit. Like I, I keep seeing people talk about idiocracy. Yeah. And I haven't seen that movie in a long time. And then like a recent, like a, I don't know if he sent it to y'all, but he sent me like a, or maybe he posted, he posted like this random clip from idiocracy. Huh. It's the one where they're talking about the Gatorade and like the plants. Have you seen idiocracy acid? Mm-hmm. You haven't, have you seen it, Mitch? No. Oh dude. I've seen it. Now that I watched that clip, I'm like, I gotta watch it again. Cause it's, it, it's a movie where you think, Oh, it's just some silly, stupid movie, but it's, it's actually really good. And it's actually really well done. Like the way they were acting and everything in it, it's funny. Um, but this one scene, it's like, it's like this guy went to the future or he got cryogenically frozen he got cryogenic. and he wakes up in the future and everyone is so fucking dumbed down that he's the smartest person on the planet, even though he was like an idiot on earth, like, or back when he was, I mean, it's yeah, just like yeah. not, he's like an average guy basically, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. but they're like, holy shit, he's the smartest person that exists. And they have all these fucking problems. And one of the problems they have is like their crops won't grow. Like the, all the crops are like decimated. It's like desert. Yeah. And, it, and they explain it in the movie. It's because. The company called, I forget what the name of the company is, but it's like Braun or something like that. And they sell like this stuff. It, it's not, I think it's just called Braun or, or something like that, but it's like Gatorade, basically. It's like their version of Gatorade. Like they- I thought it was Gatorade. He says Gatorade, but it's actually called Braun in the oh, movie. Yeah. yeah. But uh, basically they bought the FDA and they bought the FCC. So they're unrestricted in what they do and what they can say about their product and how they advertise it. And so um, they, they have billboards everywhere. Like everybody knows and is ingrained that Braun has what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. And so everyone says it almost like religiously. So he's in this like council meeting with the president who is like Terry Crews. Yeah, he's yeah. the president. And he's like, he's like, whoa, he's like this crazy, like almost like a, you know, like a wrestler or something. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and they're like, and it's got like all his like staff, which are like just always like just idiot people. Right. And they're like, Duh. and they're sitting there at this meeting and they're like, um, He's like, okay, I, I think I know how to solve the problem with why the plants aren't growing. And they're like, really? And he's like, yeah, I think it has something to do with the brawn. You're watering, because he went out into the, they took him out into the fields and they have the irrigation system and it's like sprays him by accident. And he's like, is this Gatorade? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it's brawn. It's, it's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. And then they show like basically like a little commercial for it. And it's like, they're feeding the, to the cows. They're feeding it. Like, it's like, instead of water, there's they, no one drinks water anymore. Not, there's no water. It's like replace water. And it's like, and what he explained in the movie is that the salt buildup from this stuff, because it's electrolytes, the salt buildup, like is what's fucking the plants over. Right. So he doesn't necessarily know that, but he's like, clearly you shouldn't, he's like, here's what I know. I know if you give plants water, they'll grow. And then the guy's like, uh, but, but but Braun has what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. And the other guy's like, yeah, it's, it's got electrolytes. And he's like, look, I, I know, but, but I know if you have, if you give plants water, they're like, but, but Braun has what plants crave. <laughs> and then the guy's like, I know you say that, but what does that mean? What and like, it has electrolytes? They're like, but do you know what electrolytes are? And they're like, is what plants crave. And they just, they can't, they, they've been programmed with that. Like they can't even think outside of it. Right. So he has got to convince them, like, let's just try giving some water to the plants and see what happens. Oh no. It's funny. Cause he goes, we just need to give them water. And the guy's like, oh, like out of the toilet. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> and he's like, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be out of the toilet, but you know, you got to give them some water and they, they get, they can't get, they can't get off the point of water comes from a toilet. Water is what goes in the toilet because that's what the company has programmed them all to believe. It's like water is for toilets. If you want drink, if you want to drink something, it's got to be brawn. And brawn, fucking, like I said, they bought the, they show this part where it's like the FDA building and it's like, it goes, it like stamps like over the thing, like the brawn logo. And then it shows the FCC and it's like, and it's like a brawn logo. It's like they just fucking buy everything. Right. And so, I mean, it's interesting because that's fucking reality. It's just, all they do is they call it the FCC and the FDA, but it's already bought. Hmm. And what they don't tell you is the FDA has like an actual vested interest in all the fucking vaccines and the pharmaceuticals and all yeah. that stuff. They actually make money from it. They have patents, all this stuff. It's actually all a, I mean, 
it's funny everyone complained about fascism for like four years while Trump was in office. Meanwhile, fascism's been happening this whole fucking time. Yeah. The merger of corporate and, and government. Yeah. All right. But that movie is, I'm like, oh man, this actually, this movie is actually pretty good. It's like a, a modern version of like uh, Brave New World, you know, where it's like the same thing was happening where uh, they're asking, oh, well, what are chemicals? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, stuff that you put into uh, baby's formula. <laughs> like, okay, but what is it? I don't know. It's the stuff you put into baby's formula. That's the chemicals. You just you put know? the chemicals, yeah. You just, <laughs> like, it, it's, it's crazy because that is literally, like, okay, that was talked about, I think that, what that, that book's from like the 1920s or something. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that was talked about then. It's been talked about again with this movie, Idiocracy, which I think was like early 2000s. Uh, and then it's like, we're seeing it unfold before our eyes but the only thing that's really changing is people are getting dumber or less likely to see it the, the only reason people are starting to see is because the survival pressure is getting so great and then the systems are not supporting their survival so they're just trying to keep everyone distracted um did i tell you guys i don't know if i told y'all already like last week or whatever about this book i'm reading called uh it's called the penultimate truth did i tell you all about this do you know who Philip K. Dick is? Mm-hmm. Right, he, He's like the author who wrote the books behind the movie uh, Blade Runner. He should change his middle name to this. Philip this dick. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, but like he, he wrote a book called Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. That became the basis for the movie uh, Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't read that book yet, um, but he's there's other ones too. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure Total Recall is based on one of his books. I could be wrong about that. Um, and then there's other ones too that have been made into movies that he's done. But anyways, uh, so he's, he's like a very prolific, well-known science fiction author. Um, his books are kind of out there, like they're kind of trippy. And um, he's got a lot of books. So I started buying all those books because I'm like, I want to read more of them because I'd only read like maybe one of them a while back. Anyways, I'm reading this one right now called, uh, what did I say it was? The Penultimate Truth. And the basic idea of it is that people live below the surface of the earth in what they call ant hills. And their basic way of existing is they create these robots called like leddies. I think that's how they pronounce it. They don't explain how to pronounce it. It's either leddies or leddies, but they make these robots that apparently are for the purpose of fighting the war that's going on in the surface. That's what they think is like, that's why they're creating the robot. So there's a nuclear war that's like constantly happening on the surface. You can't go up to the top and there's all these diseases you can get. Like one's called the bag plague, like B-A-G. I guess you'd call it the bag plague in Minnesota there. But uh, it's called the bag plague. And there's like all these different ones that they refer to. So it's like, you don't want to go to the surface because it, it could fuck you over, right? Big time. Some people have to go to the surface. They're called tankers because they have to bring stuff up. But every time they go up, they can't come back because they get the bag plague or whatever. But really what happens is they put them in concentration camps at the top. But they're concentration camps where it's like, you have big screen TVs and gyms and everything. It's like, it's nice. It's, it's like, they're more like apartment complex. But the people in the, in the handhelds don't have no idea. They think. And so every once in a while, they get these messages from the lead. They call him the protector. And his name is Talbot Yancey. And basically he delivers a speech and it's like about like how, what they're doing is like, you know, it may, feels like a sacrifice, but it's fighting for the effort, you know, for the war. And, you know, these brave people that are up on the surface and doing all this stuff. Right. And, um, and so what's actually happening though is on the surface, it's the, the, the land is actually now owned by these people called Yansmen. Okay, so there's that guy Talbot Yancey who's the protector, right? So these guys are called Yansmen and they're the elite and they own like all the land, like, like their, their estate is like all of Oregon, for example, or like all of the Pacific Southwest or something like that. Like they'll own entire states, like one person. Right. And then they'll have all these robots that was built for them. Okay. And so, and then they're, what they do is they're really good at writing scripts that are interpreted by a computer called Megavac 6V that then be, are read by a simulation that's called Talbot Yancey. So the protector is not a real person. It's a very realistic simulation. That's kind of like a Churchill or a Roosevelt or somebody like that. So when they're watching the video, it's like this guy is like we, our Churchill is like our leader or something, right? And he's reading these speeches, but they're they're just written by the Yansmen, 
to convince everybody to stay underground. There's no fucking nuclear war happening. So they just literally fucking stole the earth. Like, I think there was- what, what are the robots for? There was a war to get everyone to go underground, but then they stopped all that. And then they they rebuilt everything back and so forth. And these guys took over all the big pieces of land. What'd you say? What are the robots for? There must be some reason that the Yansmen are using the rope, like they're using the robots for something that the- To, to build their fucking estates and shit. Okay. Like the, they Some of this place are still quote hot spots, So there's still like radiation. So they have the robots go in there and fix everything up for them and so forth. Right. So they did a war between Russia or, you know, the Soviet union, and the United States to get everybody to go underground. And then they still act like they're at war, but in reality, the Soviet union has their own protector simulation and computer. And so does the United States. And they actually trade speeches back and forth when they're really effective to like learn from each other. And they're, they're friends. Right. And they even talk, uh, the part I was just reading, they were talking about how they created these two documentaries, one for the West and one for the East that explains all of history. Mm. It can recontextualize as World War II. And so in the West, they showed that Roosevelt in World War II, they have this secret tape where he went and he's like walking with Stalin. Stalin, right? Yeah. And he's telling Stalin like, yes, he's acknowledging he's like a, a Soviet agent and he's going to like tell him about all the movements of Hitler and all this stuff. And like, they're actually on the side and he actually wants to bring America into, so into communism and so forth. Right. And so this documentary was put out around the time of the war, like 1982 to get everybody of realizing to make them think that actually Hitler was a good guy and that he was trying to save everybody from communism. And that's why the U S fought him was because they were actually with the communists oh. and all that stuff. Right. So then that's called documentary a, Wait, that's a, that's still in the book, right? We're just talking about this book. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is the book. And then documentary B is for the people in the East, like oh, Russia yes, and so yes. forth, right? Where their documentary says, um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, their documentary says that the U.S. was secretly working with Hitler to uh, to bring down the Soviet Union. And so it's like both sides are being played against each other in their own. But the guy, but the guys who are the Yansmen, they know it's all a lie. And so like he's watching the documentary and for like, you know, he's watched it before, but this, this one main character and he's like showing how there's a flaw in it. And one of the flaws is the video, the secret like recording, you know, it was like from like a telephone mic, you know, or whatever they call him. Like, you know, it's like a secret doc recording that they got of him on that bridge. It's the proof that the whole story is true that Roosevelt was working with Stalin, for example, right? And he's talking with Stalin and he goes, do you know what the flaw is? And the woman's like, what is it? And he goes, Stalin didn't speak English, hmm. but no one even bothered to check. Like when it, when the documentary is so convincing, no one even bothered to check. And then there's another flaw in the Eastern version. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, there's th th their secret, their evidence, their proof of like Roosevelt was working with Hitler was there's a scene where they, sh they they've done like a secret footage thing where they show Hitler flying in on his on his jet to go meet with 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 Roosevelt and she's like do you he's like do you know what the flaw is he's like I don't know was it that they were speaking English but he doesn't he's like no 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 he was like let's watch it again and they watch it and he's like Hitler flies in on a Boeing 707 he's like there were no jets in World War II there's only one that was like a fighter jet that was developed by the Russians and it or the by the Germans and it didn't really work mm. he's like but this jet didn't come out till the 60s yeah so it's a fake it's not real it's the footage is fake yeah but no one even bothered to check because in the 80s jets were everywhere didn't think twice about it and it was so convincing convince everybody and now it's like they won't even look back at it so I mean look at how that <laughs> how does this how does this book end I don't know. I'm like not, I have finished it. We oh. need an update next week. But, yeah. but here's the point though. Like, can you see the, the parallel of like, look at the COVID thing, how you drive everyone underground with this big thing that's like in it. And then like every little thing that's apparently, remember all the, cons everything we've said, conspiracy theorists have said. Vaccine, you guys see this monkey pox? Who put that in mon mon monkey pox? Yeah. And now you got this thing coming forward, right? Is that real? Even to a one and then some other. Even yeah. Knows. NTI Nuclear Threat Institute. It's like a real website, nti.org. Is it a coincidence Bill Gates just came out a couple of weeks ago with the how to prevent the next pandemic, all this stuff? And he even said we need to do this while the pain of the pandemic is still fresh in people's memories. Yep, exactly. And then now there's this whole other thing coming up. Right. So again, what's the problem? Like I just about the documentary, right? 
people were so dumb. They couldn't just go like, well, how the fuck would he be flying on a jet Yeah, or whatever it is? You see what I'm saying? They wouldn't even be able to check. So people, their vocabulary, their education level, their processing ability is so low that they're not able to just check and cross-reference and say, this is clearly not true. I'm not going along with it. Right. And I know we got to go soon, but just to wrap it up, it's like, think about it. If you have a generation of children like Max and Seneca who are so fucking smart, you cannot pull the wool over their eyes because they know, like they know electronics beyond what any adult knows. So they know how physical reality works. And you have a generation of children like that, you won't be able to manipulate them into all this bullshit. Because in reality, what's going on is you have a 1% of the 1% is just owning everything and using fear to manipulate everybody just to stay in their place. When in reality, they're experiencing the great life, the high life, the fun times, all that stuff, the jets, the, all the stuff that everybody says they want. And then they're chiming out now because the money system's not working at all. The economic systems, they're telling everybody, well, you know what it is? You just got to own nothing. Yeah. It's like, we're not even gonna do the American dream anymore. Like we're not gonna fix capitalism. We just gotta just destroy it. Capitalism is a problem. You just gotta own nothing. That's the solution. And we'll just, you know, just borrow stuff. Like you need a banana here, you can borrow mine. Just make sure you give it back or, or you know, just you have a subscription. If you don't finish it, you give the rest to Mitch. You know, it's like, <laughs> like imagine, would you even take care of shit? No, no. Like imagine if you have a car, but it's not even yours. You're just kind of even gonna fucking take care of it. Like I remember like we were talking with Trey and he was complaining about, he's got like these rental properties that are low income properties. And he's like, they're just, they, they, they trash them. Then he yeah. has got to go and fucking like fix them back up and stuff. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like when you get a rental car, like, he's like, it's a rental, like just beat it up. You know, like, you don't know, right. who cares if you got the insurance, if you crash it, you're just like, don't even care. Right. Right. So we, we, the, clearly the solution, we go back to it every time is taking personal direct responsibility for sorting this out, both in the, both in the big picture and the small picture, which is in your relationships, your children, having children. Mitch, you guys are having a kid coming up pretty soon, right? Mm -hmm. So you're already doing that. You're actually walking the process, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know you got to go. So you want to, any closing thoughts? Just, um, it, it's always cool to get an update on how the kids are doing because it's, uh, <laughs> it just continues to amaze me. You just, you see clearly like we have this solution yet it's not guaranteed that we're going to make it through. So that's why we apply ourselves. So. Yeah, it's guaranteed based on we move ourselves. It's guaranteed. It's not guaranteed based on hope. Yep. Yeah. And that's where most, a lot of people are at is like hope, like, oh, it'll all work out like magically. It's like, no, it only works out if you do the things necessary. If you do the things necessary, it will work just like this cabinet. If we do all the things properly, it's going to work. My resistance to doing it was because I still had a hope that it was either going to work out or not work out. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, if I direct the point, the worst case scenario is I fuck it up and then I learn from it. Yeah. And then I know what to do properly. Yeah. Right. And then I, and then I just, it takes a little bit longer than I thought. That's the worst case scenario. But if I just go like, well, I'm just going to like kind of try to do it and not really learn. And I'm not able to learn. Then that's why we be, it would be based on hope. And the reason why people in our society participate in hope is because they don't know how to learn in a way to actually stand up, stop accepting what's going on and change the system. So that's where the hope comes in. The solution is always education. Yeah. Right. For the adult children, everybody. Right. Again, right. well, let's go out there, everyone, this week. Go we'll see you guys <laughs> next week. And uh, I guess Drake will be back in Florida. Yep. All right. Cool, everyone. Yeah, we'll join the hangout next Friday and uh, see you next week on the podcast. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>